Today, discussing a named nucleophilic addition reaction called the hell volhard zelinsky reaction. And that's a mouthful, so we'll just abbreviate HVZ. Simply put, what we're doing is we're going to take a carboxylic acid here that has a alpha carbon, and we're going to treat it with some reagents that I'm not going to share with you right now, but we're going to make this following transformation. We're going to generate, we'll keep the carboxylic acid, but now we're going to put a halogen. And so let's just put a X here for a halogen. And the reason why this reaction is important is because this right here is a starting material to then proceed to make a amino acid. And we know amino acid is huge in biology and biotechnology, and it is organic reactions. So we are going to be able to make synthetically our own amino acids with this material right here. So that's a reason why it's relevant and important to science. Now, when we take a look at this, we'd be like, well, what reagents could we use to put a halogen on an alpha carbon? And hopefully something pops into your mind that looks something like this. What instead of, if you recall, instead of a carboxylic acid, what if we had a ketone? And let's look at it like that. And what if I treated that with elemental bromine and we did this with some base present? What would we generate? We would gener generate a product that looks like this. Under basic conditions, you're going to add, you're going to replace all the alpha hydrogens with the halogen. But recall that if you did this under acidic conditions, things are a little bit different. If we take the elemental bromine, not base, under acidic conditions, so let's put in acetic acid, we recall that we would get only one of the hydrogens will get replaced with a halogen. So seeing, knowing these two reactions work with ketones, you might suspect that, hey, why not try it with the carboxylic acid? But these two reactions do not do this transformation. So what I'm saying, these conditions right here, if you take these reagents and put it up here for the HVZ reaction, it won't work. So why won't it work? Well, let's take a look at why it won't work. Because, well, let me back up a little bit. What do we know about these reactions? What do we have to generate in order for this process to work? We have to generate, for this one, it would have to be a enolate. That's one of the very important intermediates that we need to have in order for these reactions to work. It's because this carbon right here, the alpha carbon, is now nucleophilic. And we need that to be nucleophilic to form these halogen bonds, carbon-halogen bonds. But under acidic conditions, what we're going to need is the enol. Same concept just a little bit different, the, like that. 
So under acidic conditions, we generate the enol. Under basic conditions, we generate the enolate. And both of those alpha carbons are nucleophilic. And that's what we need. And so we've, what's going to happen with this reaction, we also need to get this alpha carbon nucleophilic. And we want to do that through a enol or an enolate to do that. But these conditions right here with a carboxylic acid does not get us that enol or enolate that we need. So let's explain why that is the case. So if we try to put a halogen on the alpha carbon under basic conditions with a carboxylic acid, what we would have to have happen is that our Hydroxide, right here, would have to come in and grab that proton. That's what we would want it to have, what we want it to do, so we can make that nucleophilic. But why does that not happen? Because when you compare the pKa of that alpha hydrogen, approximately 25-ish, to the pKa of a carboxylic acid, that's five, so this base right here, it's not, not going to go for this hydrogen. It's going to grab this one. So that does not happen, but the hydroxide is going to come in and grab this guy right here, and then you're going to generate the carboxylate. We don't want the carboxylate. We want the enolate and we're not going to get that. So that's why those basic conditions don't work with carboxylic acids, because it's going to react with the most acidic hydrogen. Now, what, why then does, if we change these conditions here to acidic conditions, Acetic acid with bromine. Why does that not work? Okay. Well, we have to take a look at equilibrium here and what's favored. When we compare a enolate, so I'm going to erase this. Going back to our enolates here, if we look, take a look at a ketone like this. At equilibrium, what is going to be favored? The enolate or the keto form? Let's see here. Well, we'll say enol. What's more favored? At equilibrium, or yeah, at equilibrium, we believe and understand that it is going to be the keto. Generally speaking, the keto form is more stable. So then how do we get reactions to work with enols? Well, there's still going to be some of that present, okay? But when you compare a carboxylic acid here, Okay, under acidic conditions here, we're going to have an equilibrium process once again. Like that. So that's what it would look like. And at equilibrium, under acidic conditions here, it is pretty much like all. Not, that's not exactly true. So let's just try to make a better comparison here. So that's my arrow. That's my arrow. But with the carboxylic acid, it's going to be so much smaller. Okay. So, so much smaller. So we're going to have some of this when we're doing a ketone and very, very little 
of this. And the reason comes down to the stability of these enols. This one is a whole lot more stable than this guy. Hence, this reaction up top, or right, that I'm pointing to, that works under basic and acidic conditions because this enolate or enol can form. This is an enol, but I'm just I'm using enols and enolates together depending on the reaction conditions. Okay. So then it just begs the question then, why is this guy so unstable? Okay. And the reason why this guy is so unstable has to do with the fact that this guy is very, very, it's so stabilized by resonance. So that can come down, those can come like that, and we would generate a resonance structure. And I think I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna get cut off. So just draw this resonance structure over here, okay? So this, the carboxylic acid has really good resonance stabilization, which then makes it so much more difficult to get over here to this enol. So this reaction, in essence, what I'm saying is if you try to do this reaction with halogens under basic conditions, does not work. And if you try to do it under acidic condition, also does not work for the very reasons that I've just explained. So now, let's take a look at the trick that they used to figure out how to get a halogen on the alpha carbon. And so here are the reaction conditions. And it's done in two steps. The first is that you're going to add some halogen, typically bromine or chlorine. And then you have to add some phosphorus. And the type of phosphorus that you, you, you'll see is phosphorus trichloride. That's one way to do it. And there's other ways to do it, like just adding just elemental phosphorus. That's another way to do it. But I just want to focus on these conditions. And then step two, you just add some water, and you're going to generate this product. Okay. And so the key intermediate here that I want you to understand is let's take a look at this guy right here, right? And we said that this does not work to generate the enol looking species, right? We've already talked about that. We said that does not form. But we need this carbon here to be nucleophilic, or that carbon. So look at what these reagents do. One of the intermediates is that you generate this species right there. You replace the OH with the bromine. And now, at equilibrium, you're going to be able to form you're going to now be able to form this species right here and make that carbon right there nucleophilic, okay? So when we compare these two enols right here, because we add that phosphorus, it allows us to get the bromine attached to the carbonyl carbon which then that can interconvert between the enol form and the keto form. And now this enol form is a whole lot more stable and able to form. So now we've generated a 
nucleophilic carbon at the alpha position. And this species right here, we could give it a name of a acid bromide because we're just replacing the OH with the bromide. So we just call it an acid bromide. Okay, so that's the key piece right here that makes this all happen. So now with, with all that background knowledge, now let's tackle the mechanism and look at it step by step. And this is a very involved mechanism. There's a lot of steps. But what's cool about this reaction is that a lot of the steps you have already seen before. We're just applying them to this situation. So if I say, hey, we're going to do a tautomerization, you go and do a tautomerization. If I say go and do a hydrolysis, you do a hydrolysis. So I will walk you through it, but really we're just taking known reactions that we are really good at already and then just applying it in this multi-step process. Now that I'm looking at these conditions, this looks a little weird to me. So let's change that. We still need phosphorus, but instead of phosphorus trichloride, do try bromide instead. That, that's better. Okay, so what's the first step here? Well, we'll take our carboxylic acid and we're going to treat it with the phosphorus tribromide. Okay, so I'm going to draw it like this. I'll go I'll draw two of the bromines, and then one of the bromines I will just draw extended out, like that. So that is our phosphorus tribromide. Now what's going to happen first is we'll take these lone pairs on that oxygen. That's going to come in and do that. All right. And we would call that what? An SN2 style. Then so we'll come and get this. Plus our bromide is floating around. And now that has to be positively charged. Okay? Now, what's happened is now we've made this carbonyl carbon more e electrophilic. So now we take our bromide right here. So our next step right here is a nucleophilic addition step. Bromide's going to come in. And like that. Let's see, am I going to run out of room if I try to put it here? Let's see. Yes, I did. So I'll just draw underneath here. Okay, so what we have is our bromine has now been added. And then we have the O PBR2, like that. Now let's see, do we have anything else that we need to be aware of here? So that's our nucleophilic addition step. And then we could see something like this. Let's go like that. So now we have our nucleophile elimination. Nucleophile elimination step where we can take that lone pair, pop that down, and then kick this guy off.
So we have lone pairs there. That's positively charged. And then we have still attached is our bromine. But now we have kicked off the O phosphorus Br2 negatively charged. And then we, the next step right here is to do a proton transfer. So proton transfer would simply look like that's going to come in, grab that proton, give the electrons back. And that would give us our product that I'm just going to slip in right here so we can see it. R O B R. So now we've generated our acid bromide, okay, that key intermediate that I've talked about here, generating that. So that's our first major step of this reaction. Okay. So yeah, this mechanism is rather long, but we're just using basic elementary steps to get there. And once we generate this as our product, we have an equilibrium process going on here of tautomerization. So we want to tautomerize this species. And so if we expand this hydrogen out, we're going to see a structure that we've already seen before. Okay. And we could envision that this guy can grab this proton back. Okay. And when that grabs that, we'll get something we've seen already. Like this. So that's positively charged. But then we are left with the OPBR2. But that's now negatively charged. Okay. And then we could see that, hey, that looks basic as well. So we can come in here and say, hey, there's a beautiful hydrogen right there on the alpha position that we can come and grab and go like this. So this whole mechanism right here is just a tautomerization. The whole thing's just a tautomerization. And now we're going to generate our enol. And th those electrons have to actually go to the oxygen to be more precise. Like that. Okay, so now we have our enol. So once we have our enol, <clears throat> we can now treat that with our elemental bromine. Okay. So let's go Let's do that. And this is a going to be an SN2 reaction because what we have going on here <coughs> is our bromine like this. And we know elemental bromine is very polarizable, so we could have a partially negative side and a partially positive side. And so our enol here comes down those electrons come and attack the bromine and kick that guy off like that. And so that's going to now give us our bromine's going to go here and then we have a double bonded OH like that. Three bonds to oxygen makes that positively charged and then we would have some bromide floating around like that. Okay, so that's SN2. And then the next one that we want to do is a proton transfer. And we bromide's a weak base, but it it's still a species that's in there that could abstract this proton to give us our product. 
not, not our product, not our final, final product. It's, we're finally going to get the halogen on the alpha position. But now we have to get rid of this acid bromide species right here. We need to ultimately now take that species, the bromine, and replace it with the OH. And that's the last part of the mechanism, and that's just hydrolysis. So everything that we've seen up to this point, up to this point, has been step one. Okay, so step one, we had to make the acid bromide, then we had, then we had to tautomerize it into the enol, and then we had to react that, a substitution reaction with the, out, with the halogen, and then a proton transfer, that's kind of trivial, to get us here. Now we're going to take this species and treat it with reagent number two, which is simply just water, and that's a hydrolysis reaction. So for the hydrolysis of our acid bromide here, we are going to invoke a nucleophilic addition step. Water comes in, water's nucleophilic enough, and do that. Bromine, bromine, O minus, because now that had two lone pairs, now it has three, and what did we just tack on there? O, H, and H. So that oxygen has three bonds, so that's a positive charge right there. Okay, and then we will do a proton transfer where we can take another water molecule because that's going to be our solvent. There's a lot around. So we'll just do a quick proton transfer to get rid of that positive charge. OH. O minus, <clears throat> and then what did we generate? We generated some acid, the hydronium. Okay, now we can invoke the nucleophile elimination. Nucleophile elimination. And what do we have? That guy, do we have a leaving group? We do, there's our leaving group. And then that's going to give us this. And our leaving group is our Br minus. But that right there is our product. Of, but what am I missing here? Okay. So what we've generated now is a carboxylic acid okay, that has a halogen on the alpha carbon. And we could give this a generic name, our product here, that would be a alpha bromo carboxylic acid. And the reason why alpha bromo carboxylic acids are so important is it's a precursor to generating uh, natural amino acids. So, so that is the HVZ reaction. So hopefully you can see that it's just a lot of elementary steps, things that you're already good at.